Hey guys and welcome back to another quarantine <laughs> airline. So today we'll be returning to our really quick tutorials. I've got a really good trick for you. So we will be playing around with cloth and we'll be setting our cloth to behave like soft bodies. We'll do a quick, like very quick squeezing animation. I'll show you how to do it. It's going to be really quick really simple and hopefully you learn something from it so let's get into it okay let's open up blender 2.82 i'm going to delete everything in the scene and i'm gonna add a cube okay Control 2 to subdivide it twice and after that i'm gonna add a cast modifier set the factor to one i'm just going to apply both of them just gonna scale up this sphere just a bit to about 1.5. Control A to reset the scale. Now we have a sphere looking cube. After that, I'm gonna add the cloth and the collision. So I'm just preparing the objects right now. And then after this, we're gonna fine tune them a bit more. Add a sphere, a UV sphere and scale it up to about 3.5, let's say. Press Z to enter wireframe mode, so we're seeing what's happening. And I'm going to enter edit mode by pressing tab. So I have this sphere over here. E to extrude, S, and then just drag it out. So I'm holding shift and just dragging out the sphere just a bit. The yellow line has to be outside of the black one. Otherwise, there will be a couple of problems with the collisions. Select everything, uh, control N to recalculate the normals. Okay, I'm gonna exit edit mode. I'm gonna set up a collision. This collision is going to be set to thickness outer to 0.001, and I'm gonna set the thickness inner to 00, yeah, 0 0.001 as well. I'm gonna tick off the single sided, so it works something like this. So now we have our bigger sphere and our smaller sphere. One last thing that we need, just gonna put a force field. So I'm gonna set the strength to about five, something like that. And I'm going to move this sphere just slightly outside, let's say about here. So I'm just going to move the sphere outside of the force. Now what do we have to do? Let's just test it. So yeah, this the everything is not working as we would want it, but we have a smaller sphere trapped in a larger sphere. Now, what I want to do is have a bunch of spheres that get squeezed and blend and mesh together. How we can do that very quickly is, first of all, we're going to turn off the gravity. So we go to field weights in our collision sphere over here, uh, the smaller sphere turn off the gravity. So now when I press play, the sphere actually gets pushed by our force and it gets pushed to the larger sphere. Now we can play around with the tension of the spheres. Basically also we can just, let's say, shorten the loop to about 130, something like that. We can increase the power of our strength, let's say to about 10, something like that, and then observe what's happening with our sphere. If we just turn off the compression, it's going to get completely compressed against the sphere, but we don't want that. We want to keep a bit of compression. So I think if we leave the compression at five, maybe leave the tension at five, let's just use the default settings for now. Now, what we are going to do next is basically, let's just check the collisions. I'm going to set the quality to three and the object collisions I'm going to set to 0 0.001. So it's as close as possible. Now that I have everything set up, Alt A to stop the animation, I'm going to return to the first frame. And if I get back into solid view, I still have this huge sphere over here. I'm going to turn the visibility and the viewport but there's another way we can do this. Basically, we just go under the object properties, viewport display, and change it from textures to wire. And now we have this. This is going to help us see a bit better what's happening with the spheres inside of the bigger sphere. 
Next thing, I'm just going to duplicate a couple of these spheres. So I'm just going to select the sphere, shift D, and then drag the spheres around. Let's say I'm going to make, yeah, let's say four. I'm just going to randomly resize them. And every time I resize, I just press Control A and reset the scale. I do the same for the next one. Maybe I'm going to make this a bigger one and just move it over here and I'm going to drag this one over here. I'm leaving one of them like the size that they were when they were originally created. If I press play I can see that they all go away from the center. Now let's just check that we have everything that we need. So basically we need cloth with collisions at a higher quality and, and low margin, and we need the actual collision. So they can collide with themselves. And what we are going to do next is just press the auto keying symbol over here, select the larger sphere, press S on the first frame. So we have our first frame recorded, then move to frame 90. Don't worry if your animation freaks out, it's completely normal when the cloth is not baked. And I'm going to resize it down to 0. Let's say 0. 0.06. We'll just try it and see if we get any glitches. We adapt everything. Now let's press A and let's see what happens. So they are getting squished, 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 and they squish together. So you can see we have a bit of a problem over here. Again, we are working with low mesh numbers. For I think the whole project here has a thousand and four hundred faces so you can actually increase the number of that we can we can also make that with our larger sphere for example we can put a subdivision before the actual collision increase that and see how how it moves but again we lose a lot of our viewport we get a lot of lag especially if on let's say weaker systems uh, so before you attempt something like that, I would recommend that you get just the collisions right at the lower levels and then increase it to larger ones so you know that everything is going well for you. So you can see it glitched out at that very exact moment. So we can just roll back our subdivision on the huge sphere so we can just take it off. And we know that this sphere is just a bit too tight, so I'm going to scale it back up by, let's say, 0.2. Return, and let's control C what happens with our spheres. And basically, they're squishing together. They're also moving and reacting to each other because there is a force field between them. The last thing to do is just equip them, for example, with a couple of subdivision modifiers. Let's say we put all of these on all of the spheres. I usually do this. I don't really care a lot when I'm doing like this type of MoGraph stuff because it's, again, it's not gaming related. So you don't have to care that much about faces anyway. Just shade smooth and let's try it out now. And it's like at that exact point where they're just barely just denting each other in. Now, if you want to see the result without the main sphere, you can see it right here. You can also then add different stuff inside. This is like an added bonus. Let's say, for example, a vortex. I'm going to add a force field vortex. And this is basically going to turn the spheres inside of the ball. I can increase the strength so that they start to, you see, they start to move around the whole thing. You can also, for example, let's say, rotate the actual sphere. Let's press R twice and then just turn it randomly. And it also should, in fact, yeah, it also, it also influences. But again, we are getting some, some strange results when we do that, especially if there's high velocities inside. Maybe we can try it with a lower just a 45 degree turn and let's see what happens so you can see that they are getting displaced they are getting moved around and for longer scenes you can also choose and turn the actual sphere around so this is basically it for this video now there's plenty of more options here to explore we did this with very let's say low 
subdivision rates with very low faces. You can go with more faces, but then you have to manipulate more the settings of the cloth because it's again it's not a typical usage of cloth. At least I didn't I didn't see it a lot of the times with Blender. In any case, if you'd like me to explore this a bit more or show you more advanced settings or some different settings for the motion graphics aspect, just let me know in the comments or leave a like, that really helps me out, and see you in the next one. Bye.